Hello everyone and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the staggering number of evictions that are going on in so many states. So let's talk about it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share the video, it's free. After a lull during the pandemic, eviction filings by landlords have come roaring back, driven by rising rents and a long-running shortage of affordable housing. Most low-income tenants can no longer count on pandemic resources that had kept them housed, and many are finding it hard to recover. Because they have not found steady work, or their wages have not kept pace with the rising cost of rent, food and other necessities. Protections have ended, the federal moratorium is obviously over, and emergency rental assistance money has dried up in most places. Across the country, low-income renters are in an even worse situation than before the pandemic due to things like massive increases in rent during the pandemic, inflation and other pandemic era related financial difficulties. Eviction filings are more than 50% higher than the pre-pandemic average in some cities, according to the Eviction Lab, which tracks filings in nearly three dozen cities and 10 states. Landlords file around 3.6 million eviction cases every year. Among the hardest hit are Houston, where rates were 56% higher in April and 50% higher in May. In Minneapolis, St. Paul, rates rose 106% in March. 55% in April and 63% in May. Nashville was 35% higher and Phoenix 33% higher in May. Rhode Island was up 32% in May. The latest data mirrors trends that started last year, with the eviction lab finding nearly 970,000 evictions filed in locations it tracks. A 78.6% increase compared to 2021 when much of the country was following an eviction moratorium. By December, eviction filings were nearly back to pre-pandemic levels. At the same time, rent prices nationwide are up about 5% from a year ago and 30.5% above 2019, according to the real estate company Zillow. There are few places for displaced tenants to go, with the National Low-Income Housing Coalition estimating a 7.3 million shortfall of affordable units nationwide. Many vulnerable tenants would have been evicted long ago if not for a safety net created during the pandemic. The federal government, as well as many states and localities, issued moratoriums during the pandemic that put evictions on hold, most have now ended. There was also $46.5 billion in federal emergency rental assistance that helped tenants pay rent and funded other tenant protection. Much of that has been spent or allocated, and calls for additional resources have failed to gain traction in Congress. The disturbing rise of evictions to pre-pandemic levels is an alarming reminder of the need for us to act at every level of government to keep folks safely housed, said Democratic United States Rep. Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, urging Congress to pass a bill cracking down on illegal evictions fund legal help for tenants, and keep evictions off credit reports. Las Vegas has seen one of the country's biggest jumps in eviction filings. That evaporated during the pandemic-triggered shutdown in March 2020. Who can imagine working all their life only to have to live in a tent or at a shelter? In upstate New York, evictions are rising after a moratorium lifted last year. 40 of the state's 62 counties had higher eviction filings in 2022. And before the pandemic, including two where eviction filings more than doubled compared to 2019. How do we care for the folks who are evicted? When the capacity is not in place and ready to roll out in places that have not experienced a lot of eviction recently, said Russell Weaver, whose Cornell University lab tracks evictions statewide. Housing advocates had hoped the Democrat-controlled state legislature would pass a bill requiring landlords to provide justification for evicting tenants and limit rent increases to 3% or 1.5 times inflation. But it was excluded from the state budget and lawmakers failed to pass it before the legislative session ended this month. Our state legislature should have fought harder, said Oscar Brewer, a tenant organizer facing eviction from the apartment he shared with his six-year-old daughter in Rochester. In Texas, evictions were kept down during the pandemic by federal assistance and the moratoriums. But as protections went away, housing prices skyrocketed in Austin, Dallas, and elsewhere, leading to a record 270,000 eviction filing statewide in 2022. Advocates were hoping the state legislature might provide relief 
directing some of the $32 billion budget surplus into rental assistance. But that has not happened. It is a huge mistake to miss our shot here, said Ben Martin, a research director at nonprofit Texas Housers. If we do not address it now, the crisis is going to get worse. Still, some pandemic protections are being made permanent and having an impact on eviction rates. Nationwide, 200 measures have passed since January 2021, including legal representation for tenants, sealing eviction records, and mediation to resolve cases before they reach court, said the National Low Income Housing Coalition. These measures are credited with keeping eviction filings down in several cities, including New York City and Philadelphia, 41% below pre-pandemic levels in May for the former and 33% for the latter. A right to counsel program and the fact that housing courts are not prosecuting cases involving rent areas are among the factors keeping New York City filings down. In Philadelphia, 70% of the more than 5,000 tenants and landlords who took part in the eviction diversion program resolved their cases. The city also set aside $30 million in assistance for those with less than 3,000 in area and started a right to counsel program, doubling representation rates for tenants. The truth of the matter is the rich is getting richer and the rest of us will get poorer. There has been three economic classes of people that is the upper class, which is the rich, the middle class and the lower class, which is the poor, but they are squeezing the middle class in with the poor. The middle class will be no more, and there will only be two classes, the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like and a comment. And if it is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share the video. Until next time.